Today is Juneteenth, a combination of two words, June and 19th. It's in celebration of those who were set free from slavery. In September 1862, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued. In January 1863, it was implemented. However, word didn't reach Texas or something happened because Juneteenth is in celebration of June 19th, 1865. Let me read to you from the New York Post about that day. The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. The Union General read aloud to the residents of Galveston, end of the quote. So June to, Juneteenth is in celebration of that day. This led me to think about what does the Bible say about humanity, about this human race? Well, it begins in Genesis chapter one, verse 27. God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And for the first time, I started thinking in terms of what's missing there. It's about color, color's missing. No eye colors, no blue, no brown, no hazel, no hair color, red, black, blonde, brown, and no skin color. Nothing light, nothing dark, no hues are mentioned. This really sets the agenda for the rest of the Bible because we know that God is most concerned about the heart and the content of a person's character rather than the color of the outward appearance of a man or a woman. Then I jump to the end of the book to see what's happening near the end of all things. In the book of Revelation, the apostle John writes this from chapter five, and they sang a new song and the song is to the lamb who is Jesus. You were slain and with your blood, you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. This is John's way of saying that it's about all people. It doesn't matter where they were born. We can look now, it's not about Asia or Africa or Europe or South America or North America or Australia or the Arctic or Antarctica. It's, it's not about any of those, right? It's about people. People created in the image of God. And God's greatest love demonstration came through the person of Jesus when he was slain, when he shed his blood for all people everywhere, all people of all ages. God loves. And then in Revelation chapter 7, John goes on to write this. And after this, I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. People, you can see it from all parts of the globe, looking all different from one another together proclaiming that God is our ultimate rescuer. It's not just about forgiveness of sins, it's about a total rescue of who we are. And as the end is nearing, God is going to make all things new. Imagine that crowd together in one loud voice proclaiming, and perhaps in all the languages of the earth, salvation belongs to our God. You know, it would be really cool if we began to practice that right now on this side of the end of all things. Chains break and they continue to break. May more chains break now than ever before. And may we together with our brothers and sisters from around this world, from all different countries and nations and continents, worship together. May God bless you and may we worship with one another.